Hi, I'm Eloise. And I'm Aaron, and we're from Foster Athletic. And today what we're going to do for you guys is tell you a little bit of a story about how we came up with Foster Athletic. So we recently rebranded our business and it has a new focus now. Uh, and that being Foster Athletic, we want to tell you about how we came up with that and why we've gone in the direction we've gone in. And a lot of that actually has to do with Eloise's story. So I'm going to let her kick off the story for you. So after years in the fitness industry and years of fitness being sort of my number one priority in life, I sort of had a change of heart, I guess, and my priorities changed and fitness sort of took a back seat and it wasn't really a conscious decision I made, but just gradually over time, you know, I was less interested in making fitness and nutrition my number one priority. Essentially, I took a year off training and a year off thinking about what I was eating at all. Like I just sort of ate whatever I wanted. During that year, I managed to put on 10 kilos. I got to this point where, you know, my clothes weren't fitting anymore and I was feeling really tired all the time. Even just like walking up the street, I was like getting breathless and I was just feeling really weak. My muscles were all like really tight and I was getting a lot of neck pain. Headaches as well. Headaches, for like, shoulder pain, like. <laughs> just downhill was, pretty quick. Yeah, and I just sort of found myself in this <clears throat> place where like everything just felt difficult, like life just felt difficult. You know, I realized that something was going to need to change. You know, I was the fitness professional. This shouldn't be happening to me. But, um, yeah, so I decided to make this change. Sort of went back to doing the things that I was used to doing in the past. So in the past, it would be things like, all right, heavy strength training for like a few hours every day. Uh, you know, counting my macros and calories and really just controlling what I was eating. So I went straight back to doing that, but because my priorities had shifted and all of my habits were different, you know, I didn't have those healthy habits there anymore. Uh, it was really difficult, you know, and I couldn't stick to the plan that I had stuck to for so many years before. And it was just a really different uh, experience for me. You know, I was really struggling and I was sort of, I was the fitness professional and sort of felt a bit like a fraud because, you know, I couldn't even go to the gym when I wanted to go and all of my sessions were bad. You know, I couldn't stick to the healthy eating plan that I had set for myself or whatever. So yeah, it's sort of, I got to this point where I was struggling. It was pretty, um, as I've always said, you know, you, you're a fitness professional and you can't follow through on the very things that you're teaching. It's sort of, it's sort of, it was a light bulb moment for us both in that, you know, maybe if like we're having struggle, having a problem sticking to the methods that we're using, maybe these aren't the best, best methods that we should be teaching our clients. Yeah. Yeah. It was a huge light bulb moment there. Yeah. And it was, um, I remember Eloise was reading an article one day and she actually said to me, she's like, Hey, you should definitely read this. This is really interesting and I think that uh, this will be a game changer for how we do things and it, it definitely yeah. was. Yeah and it, it, so it was an article from Precision Nutrition and it was about uh, the right type of goals to set and the article didn't tell me anything that I hadn't known before. It just sort of was the right timing. You know I read it at the right time to implement that and uh, so the basic idea of the article was that outcome goals are not as effective as process goals. So an outcome goal is something like I want to lose 10 kilos or I want to deadlift 200 kilos or I want to run a marathon in X amount of time. Those are outcome goals. And so the article basically explained that we don't really have control at the end of the day over whether we get those outcome goals. You know, there are so many other variables that come into it. So what's a better way to approach your health and fitness is to set these process goals. So like habits that you're going to do every day or habits a certain number of times a week to build. And if you tick all of those off, then you're on track to your goal. So those sort of things would be like going for a walk every day or uh, adding vegetables to each meal or drinking two liters of water a day, those kind of things. 
um yeah and i think yeah. it was it's pretty um it was evident to us at the time that most of the methods that we'd been using were very focused on tactics you know little ways in which you could do something specifically to achieve an outcome so it was it was sort of skipping past the overall strategy the overall strategy is to do it in a way that's sort of more sustainable and that yeah. it, it comes second nature rather than forcing yourself into this mold of you have to do it this way and if you don't then you're not going to succeed and that's what we'd sort of experienced in the past when Eloise went back to doing it the way that she'd known is it was quite restrictive and then when she didn't follow through with those very things she didn't get the outcome so it was it was just affirming that negative belief that this isn't working um, and when we read this article it was sort of like we said before it was a, a light bulb moment that we'd been focusing on the wrong areas and we need to take a step back and focus on the overall strategy yeah and, that, and that's sort of what we did and we put a, a bit of a plan together and we go all right all right let's put some of these steps into practice and that's what we did with Eloise yeah well I know I first started trying to implement this on my own so I sort of would you know I set these goals for myself and I was sort of going going it alone essentially and I found that I was still struggling like you know this even though this was a way better and more sustainable approach I just doing it on my own was a little bit difficult you know I was still I was finding it hard to build these new habits and I was still struggling with sort of a lot of issues around mindset and also just doing things consistently so you know it was one of those things where I knew what I needed to do but I just was struggling to do it and so that's when I had the, a conversation with Aaron and we decided that we would do it together and he would sort of act as my coach essentially. Yeah so my job in in this whole process was really to keep Eloise accountable it's it's very easy to sort of know what to do but not being able to put it into practice and it's something we hear all the time is yeah. a lot of people say like i know what i should be eating i just can't seem to do it and that's that rings true across the board and it, that happens to us too that's where having someone in your corner to hold you accountable and just to try and bring you back on track you know not necessarily just cracking the whip and making <laughs> you do all these crazy things in but an encouraging way <laughs> exactly you know we all fall yeah. off the track from time to time and that was my job was to get Eloise back on track making sure that she's doing the things daily that she needs to do to form yeah. the habits that are required to make this a long-term approach yeah and it's one of those things where it's like when you're doing it yourself, you're in your own little bubble and it's easy to sort of just keep doing things one way and never think about a different way to do them. So having an outside perspective of someone who's not you, who can look in and say like, oh, maybe you should try it this way or, you know, maybe you're struggling with this because of this, like how about you try a different approach, you know, like if your workout's if you're struggling with your workouts, maybe we need to change those up or like little things like that. Mm. And even just um, having someone there sort of encouraging you and telling you, yeah, you're on the right track. You're doing really well. It's even for fitness professionals, it's helpful. Like it, it really just helps affirm that, yep, you're doing the right thing. Keep going. So yeah, I found that really helpful. And together we managed to come up with sort of a, a program and a, a philosophy of training and nutrition that has just worked so well for both of us. Yeah, so as Aloy said, we, we sort of put together a bit of a program and, and adopted these methods and we've obviously tried it on Eloise. I actually tried it myself and I lost 10 kilos from doing this. I put these into practice. That was not my intention. Um, for for me, I had been using the methods that we used to use, which were you know things that involved like macro counting, being really restrictive and down to you know minute details and making sure that everything was right. Uh, for me, I, I compete in the sport of strongman, which requires me to go at a certain weight class. And you know with training, you're trying to recover faster, get stronger, so it means you're eating more food. And eventually, like your weight does tend to fluctuate. You come down for competitions, then you go up. Then you come down and over time the general trend is you go up and I had put on 10 kilos but starting to implement all the stuff that we'd come up with I, I lost 10 kilos and uh, I was feeling 
a thousand times better than I was previously when everything was yeah. quite restrictive. I was just feeling a lot better. I was able to even think more clearly, you know, inside the business, ideas were coming to me much quicker instead of just sitting there and drawing a mental blank, uh, yeah. which was really great. And I think that's been the biggest change for both of us and a big reason for us changing the tune of the business is the way that we felt when we were implementing these methods. So in the past, when we had, you know, focused on fat loss, it was in a way that, you know, we sort of put health aside and focused on like how to lose fat. So there are like two frames here, like you've got fat loss specifically, and then you've got health and they're actually two different things. And so what we've now done is put them both together. So we're able to lose fat in a healthy and sustainable way and a way that really just like highlights that element of feeling good, which is something that we really didn't do in the past. And that's, I think, been the biggest change and the biggest reason why we then rebranded to Foster Athletics so that we could really start fresh with this new sort of philosophy and really just focusing on health and feeling good, you know, feeling light, feeling healthy and fit. So that's, yeah, that's right. Exactly. And, um, with Foster Athletic, the, the whole name of the game and the reason why we made this shift was to actually simplify things that seem really complicated to a lot of people. When it comes to something like nutrition, a lot of people see nutrition as this giant Rubik's Cube that they have to get right and there's some special formula that's going to magically work. And the reality is it's not like that at all. It, it just requires you to have some fundamental habits that you've built up over time that are working for you every single day rather than just, you know, you're trying this one tactic this week and then it doesn't work so you try something different and you're just constantly jumping from program to program you want to do it in a way that a feels great and two that you know you can do sustainably for the rest of your life because let's face it you're going to have to eat for the rest of your life you want to be able to do that and have a bit of flexibility and enjoy life still yeah and i mean our lifestyles have changed dramatically uh since we've started fossa and you know all we want is for other people to experience that because you know these behaviors that we previously sort of felt like we were like forcing and you know we were always having to sort of I guess go out of our way to make progress now it's kind of like it's just a natural part of what we do and you know we're just naturally making progress in a way that just feels good so that's really the biggest thing for us that's right. And we've tried this out with several of our clients. So after we experienced what it was like to actually go through, we started rolling this out with a few of our clients and they've been getting awesome results and reporting back much the same thing, that it's actually changing their life in the way that they look at everything as a whole, not yeah. just this is my nutrition, this is my training, and then this is, you know, this yeah. other thing. It's, it's, it's all one thing. It's like holistic. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And that yeah. really... The way that we've sort of structured this and the reason why we rebranded it <clears throat> really works in tune with one of our main core values, which is the principle of Kaizen. Uh, if you don't know what Kaizen is, Kaizen is that continual 1% improvement every day. So we're constantly looking at ways to get better. And so we wanted to embody that with our business so that you know we have a sustainable way that we can get clients results in you know the most achievable way that they enjoy. And that's exactly what we've come up with. And that's the aim of Foster Athletics. So guys, I hope that was really helpful and gave you a bit of an insight. Uh, it literally was a decision that was born out of a problem that we were facing and that uh, you know we put some practices into play and we thought, well, we've had such great results from this. We started testing it with some clients and they got great results too. So we thought, well, this is the name of the game. We wanna change our current methods into something new and we want a bit of a fresh start to the whole thing. So that's why we came up with Fossa Athletic.